Labas. In the previous video, we implemented all the static elements of the rotary passcode UI. Missed the first part? Oh, you better believe that's a paddling, and you should do it now. Anyway, it was released 8 months ago, so there's a high chance that you did it already. In this video, I will cover the motion design part of the challenge. Animations, gestures, transitions, and other fancy eye candies visible on the screen. Without further ado... Ra -da 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 -do. In Flutter, there are two types of code-based animations, implicit and explicit ones. For implicit animations, just select and use one of the predefined animation widgets from the Flutter library. For explicit animations, you need to create an animation controller and take care of all the implementation details yourself. Let's start by implementing the implicit crossfade animation for the input mode button. First, add the animation duration property that will allow us to synchronize this animation with other components. Then, define the animation duration by creating an animation duration property and passing it to the input mode button. To make life easier, create a private button widget that accepts the label property and the on tap callback. Then, move the generic buttons code to the private widget. The easiest way to implement the animation is by using the animated crossfade widget. Let's add it to the build method. Then, pass the animation duration and different values for different input modes. Now you should see why extracting the generic button code to a separate widget was a good idea. For the crossfade state, use the simple input mode to decide which button variation to show. Then, set the alignment to center left and use ease in out cubic animation curves for a slow starting as well as slowly ending animation. That's it for the button animation. The animated crossfade does all the dirty work. Just tap on the button and see how smoothly one button state transitions to the other. The next UI element we will cover is the passcode digits indicator. However, before implementing anything that animates, we need to make the input buttons interactive and provide callbacks to them. Thus, add an on digit selected property. Then, add the render method to the dial number so that we can wrap it with a gesture detector. Look. I know that most likely this should have been extracted to a separate widget, but I was just too lazy to do it, okay? Just too lazy to do it, okay? You suck! Next, add a copy with method to the passcode digit model. Then, inside the passcode input view, create a current input index variable and on digit selected method. The method gets the current active passcode digit value and updates it using the copy with method as well as refreshes the UI. Do not forget to pass the method as a callback to the passcode input widget. The buttons are working now. However, the passcode digits indicator still lacks animations. And, well, we probably need to add some validation code first. What I mean by validation is that once we input all the required digits, we should either see a success or error indicator. Also, the input must be reset so we can try again. In passcode input view, add unsuccess and on error callbacks and pass them from the root of the application. We will leave them empty, but in real world use cases, you should probably trigger the route change or handle any other actions. Then. Add the reset digits method and refactor the code a bit by moving the initialization code from the init state method. Also, do not forget to reset the current active passcode digit index. Next, add the validate passcode method and call it from the on digit selected callback. The validation must be run only when the last digit in the passcode is inserted. If that's true, we get a string representation of our input and compare it to the expected code. If the code is correct, we trigger the unsuccess callback on error otherwise. Also, do not forget to reset the digits afterwards. Okay, the passcode input is working as expected. We do not get any ugly exceptions anymore. Let's get back to the fun part, animations. The passcode digits component behavior consists of four animations. Digit input, success indicator, error indicator, and input mode change animations. To animate the digit input, add the animation duration property to the passcode digits widget and pass it down to the digit container. This is another implicit animation. All we need to do 
is replace the container with animated container and set the duration property with a specific animation curve. The last thing to do here is to pass the animation duration to the Pasco digits widget. Wow, it looks much better now. However, once we input the last digit, it just clears out, but we need to show whether it was correct or not. Let's start with the happy path. First, add a boolean flag to track whether the passcode animation is currently in progress or not. If the animation is running, disable all passcode inputs and validation. Also, add a handy method to toggle the animation status. Next, add a method that updates the passcode digit colors. In the method, loop over each digit with a delay. This helps you achieve the staggered animation effect. After the delay, simply update the background and font colors of a passcode digit. Before changing colors, calculate the staggered animation interval. In this case, we split the animation into equal intervals. It means that each subsequent passcode digit animation is run after the same delay, thus providing a smooth reveal effect. Before and after the passcode validation, call toggle passcode animation method for the animation progress flag to return to the correct value. Update the validation method to return future. Also, Add a little delay before resetting the digits so that the success or error state is visible on the screen for a bit. For the success state, it's pretty simple. Just update the background color to green and make the font color transparent. This is what the successful state animation looks like. All the passcode digits become green in a delayed sequence and then get reset to their initial state. The error case is a bit more tricky. First, all the input digits are revealed on the red background then, they are reset to the white circles and disappear afterwards. And this is the result. The whole animation sequence is a little bit longer than the previous one, but it provides the context to the user of what went wrong. Next on the list is a Giga Chat, the main boss of this video, the rotary dial animation. I hope you remember some math, kids, because I don't. The first thing you should do is convert the rotary dial input widget to a stateful one since we will use explicit animations there. Then pass the required callbacks. The compiler is screaming in errors at you now, so just pass the callbacks to the rotary dial input widget. Add two offset variables. The current drag offset is needed to track the current drag position of your finger, while start angle offset stores the value of how much the foreground part changed from its starting position in radians. Yep, we are getting into this kind of calculation now. The dial's foreground should rotate around the circle. For that, we only need to keep track of a starting position of an arc, other values could be recalculated based on that. Thus, we add start angle offset property and extend the should repaint method so that the foreground will be updated once the property changes. Again, compiler errors, just pass the start angle offset property to the painter. First, we create an angle offset variable and calculate its value in radians. Then, we add this offset to the first dial number position so that the arc and the dial number holes are painted in their rotated positions. Next, add a method to rotate the dial to its initial position, meaning set the start angle offset to zero. Add drag gesture methods that will be used to track the pointer or finger movement on the dial. Then, wrap the foreground painter with the gesture detector and pass the previously created methods. The onpan start method implementation is as simple as calculating the initial touch position offset from the dial input center. The onpan update method is a bit more tricky. First, calculate the current offset by adding the delta value to the previous offset. Then, compare the current and previous drag directions. If the product of these two values is negative, it means that the drag direction has changed and the update should be ignored. Calculate a new angle offset value. If the value is out of bounds, ignore the update. Finally, update the start angle offset with a new value. For the on pan end method, we normalize the offset value so that it actually shows the offset from the first dial number. If the offset value is too minor, we simply reset the dial. Then, we convert the offset angle value to the dial number index. Simply, our dial numbers are positioned 30 degrees apart around the circle. Thus, we convert radians to degrees and divide the value by 30. After applying some rounding, we get the selected dial number index. Finally, we create the add digit method that calls the on digit selected callback and resets the dial to its initial position. The rotary dial is finally working and you can already use it to enter the passcode. However, currently, 
there is no animation to gradually return the dial to its initial position. It jumps straight to it. Let's make it smoother. First, add an animation duration property and pass it from the passcode input view. Since we will work with explicit animations here, add a single ticker flicker ricker provider mixin state mixin to the state class. Create an animation control for the dial and update the is animating getter. Also, add guards to skip all the drag gesture callback methods when the animation is running. Create a rotation animation variable that will smoothly reset the dial to its initial position. Also, initialize the dial controller and make sure that the start angle offset value gets updated when the animation runs. Update the dial reset method. Instead of setting the value to zero straight away, a tween animation is created that starts from the current dial's start angle offset and ends at zero, its initial value. The important part here is that we need to validate the code explicitly. In the animation, the passcode gets validated only after the dial gets back to its initial position. Thus, we run the rotation animation and call the passcode validation callback afterwards. Also, because of the delay, we should avoid validating the passcode just after inserting a digit. Thus, Add the auto validate flag to the on digit selected method. Then update the on digit selected callback for the passcode input. That's it. The rotary dial animation is working smoothly. The passcode gets validated at the right time as well. The last remaining animation that we need to implement is the transition between different input modes. A little bit tricky, but a really fun one. The input mode change animation consists of four parts hiding the rotary dial foreground hiding the rotary dial background, a hero animation of the passcode digits component changing its position, and a simultaneous hero animation of dial numbers transitioning to their new positions. First, add a single kicker ticker flicker provider state mixin to the state class, create a mode change animation controller, and update the is animating getter. Initialize the mode change controller that runs twice as long as the animation duration. It's because one passcode input view should disappear first and then the other one appear on the screen. Refactor the on mode change callback by extracting the code of the input mode update and adding some animation code. If the animation is completed, we need to reverse it and run it forward otherwise. The delay here is needed since we will run a hero animation for the dial numbers first before starting the rotary dial animation part. You will notice this a little bit later. Add new transition animation related properties to the rotary dial input widget and pass them from the passcode input view. Create separate animations for rotary dial foreground and background elements and update the is animating getter. The rotary dial foreground animation runs during the first half of the transition and updates the sweep angle, basically the arc's length from its maximum value to zero. The background animation runs during the second half of the transition and changes its value from one to zero. Add the sweep angle property to the foreground painter and update the should repaint method. The compiler tells us to pass the sweep angle property. We do that and provide the current foreground animation value. Now, Instead of using the constant sweep angle value, we use the provided property. Also, we use the property to calculate the opacity of a dial stop. Initially, the sweep angle and the maximum sweep angle are equal, thus the opacity is 1. During the transition animation, the sweep angle value will gradually get closer and closer to 0, as well as the opacity of this little fella. Smart and simple, right? This is the current state of the transition. The rotary dial foreground gradually disappears just as we expected. Now, let's take care of the dial's background transition. Add the opacity property to the background painter and update the should repaint method. The compiler cries in errors, so pass the background animation's value as opacity for the background painter. Simply, use the opacity property for the painter's color. That's it, really. Notice that the rotary dial's background gradually disappears now. Let's move to the last part of the transition flow, hero animations. From the hero animations documentation on the flutter.dev page, the hero refers to the widget that flies between screens. And that's actually a problem. In our UI, we swap the UI elements but do not navigate between pages. Thus, the default hero animations do not really work for us. Happily, some smarter people implemented the local hero package. It's a package that allows running hero animations while staying in the same route. Simply add a package to pubspec.yaml file 
and notice that this workaround is not needed anymore since the issue is already fixed in the package. As per documentation, define the local hero scope for your UI. We simply wrap the whole passcode input view content. Let's start with the passcode digits component and wrap each digit in a row with the local hero widget. And, well, that's it. Notice how the passcode digits gradually transition to the center and change their size on mode change. We apply the exact same logic to the dial number widget by wrapping it with the local hero widget. Since we use the same widget in both, rotary dial and simple passcode input views, no other changes are needed. Yep, the hero animation is working and all the dial numbers smoothly travel to their updated positions. Nice. Here you can see the final result. It was a great UI challenge that covered a lot of different components of Flutter needed to build custom UIs. Custom painters, implicit, explicit, and staggered animations. Feel free to revisit this tutorial at your own pace and leave your questions in the comment section below this video. Thanks for watching. Save trees, stay solid, and see you around.